This is the dawn of a new era in British karting. Over 550 drivers in 12 classes competing for victory over 18 race weekends. This is the Motorsport UK British Kart Championships. The intensity of the Minimax title fight travels to the ancestral home of Jensen Button, Clay Pigeon, near Froome in Dorset. It's been a tough and very closely contested season, but for Alexander Hughes, it's been a year of solid development. Yesterday, he finally clinched his first win in the British Championship. So now the next target must be to win in a final. It, it, was, it felt good to win, the first, win my first British Championship race. Um, just a lot off my chest because obviously we've been up there or thereabouts all, all season and to finally get up there felt good. Obviously we've had, we had a great start at PFI but we had a few rocky rounds at Rara and Dunk as well and then we had a great round at GYG so I think top five or even top four would be the best we could get at the end of the season. Jez Williams in pole, Archie Kitching second, Harley Horton and Harry Reynolds, Sam Gornall and Ryan Willis, Finn Smith and Callum Voisin, Jake Sanson and Sam Hunter with you for this final race of the day in Minimax and we're racing. Cracking start from Archie Kitching who gets a much better start than the rest of the side of the grid but out around the outside he's going to lose the position to the inside line as Harley Horton cracks into second position in behind our pole sitter Jez Williams and the rest of the field dices for position as they make their way through the first couple of corners. A really good start though from our man in pole position, Jez Williams got away and won by nearly nine seconds in the first race. I'm keeping an eye on the likes of Tristan Rennie and Alex Hughes who had a terrible first final. Rennie out of the race and Alex Hughes didn't even make the start despite due to be lining up on the front row but they'll be charging through. <coughs> start from uh, most of the drivers at the front there. No dramatic absentees from the uh, the front runners who didn't get away particularly well, Williams as well, the, uh, not quite as dominant a start I don't think this time and uh, well we'll just see has, how this race pans out if he's able to be as dominant as he was in the, in the last race, it's just not very often you see that from a minimax, someone storm away like Williams did and you can already see that the three Coles racing drivers just in behind him now offer to they're likely to offer some pretty substantial pressure to him. Horton, Kitching and Reynolds, all very quick drivers as well. This, you just look at, through the field and you just can't really see any drivers who think, oh, they're, they're not likely to win. It's so quick, this, this class. And as you mentioned, with Alex Hughes moving through the order and Tristan Rennie as well, I'm sure they'll be picking up a few places. It's whether they get wrapped up in any incidents along the way with perhaps less experienced drivers. Rennie has a look up the inside there, can't quite improve on his current position. He's sitting in 15th at the moment, but still has an awful lot of time left to go. Yeah, this is going to be an intriguing race in the midfield as well as at the front end of the field. Ryan Willis currently in fifth position. Here goes Archie Kitching to get back on the inside of Harley Horton. And he's through. So too is Reynolds. So too is Willis. All it takes is one little gap to open up. And you can have several drivers charging through to get the place away. So a nice bit of racecraft there from Archie Kitching to get himself back into that second place spot. And he was telling me on the grid, he just wants to make sure that Jez Williams doesn't get away. But he's already got a lead of about seven to eight tenths of a second, I would say. At this point, he needs some help now from his teammate, uh, Harry Reynolds, who is in there behind him. Uh, to charge down the main straight and start to gain ground and that's exactly what they're doing they know they can't win the race if Jez Williams gets too far away so they are working in collaboration together to try and get that gap down Harry Reynolds trying to do so by being in second place by the look of it it seems as though he wants to make the move on his teammate but they need to play patience they need to work together to get that gap down to Williams he can't afford to lose more time and let the Welshman disappear into the distance. As they say, teamwork makes the dream work, and I think for this particular section of the race, Ryan Willis could well join the Coles Racing team because he equally will not want Jez Williams to disappear up the road. The problem is with, of course, overtaking one another is that whole gap of time, you lose the, the time it takes 
two overtake for the driver further up the road, so they will be very keen on just keeping behind one another. Of course, they can utilise the slipstream, as we've seen was very effective in the previous heat. At the moment, though, it seems that a lot of those drivers have in their heads, right, we're not just going to go all out attack here. We're going to try and catch up to Jez Williams, suck him into this battle, and then start trying to beat each other up over positions. So this is going to continue to be a really tight fight at the front end of the field. Jez Williams out in first position. Just making sure everything's okay down the main straight. Here comes Arlie Horton trying to get back on terms with Willis. He's not going to make it through there in the first corner. But as they come into Billy's blind, he's got to get himself neat and tidy back in for the S's. So still, Jez Williams holds the pace on the Vision Motorsport machine. The Cosmic chassis serving him well again. And just as in the first final, he's got a decent lead, but uh, he will certainly not have it quite so easy if these six drivers in tandem are able to team up and work together to close him in. Kitching, Reynolds, Willis, Horton, Voison, and Finn Smith joins the back of the queue in the Team Clay racing cart. He's there in the seventh position at the moment, trying to stay with. Looks as though he's had to change front fairing at one point. Horton up the inside of Willis, and that is through. So Horton gets into position there on the inside of Billy's blind. And at the S's, he's now in fourth position. Reynolds, though, has have had enough of waiting around behind Kitching. He goes for second place at hands and gets there. But Kitching's trying to get back into position again, and he's had to luck in behind. Uh, Horton tried to get the move on uh, Kitching as well, and that has held him up to a certain extent. He's in fourth place, but this is exactly what they didn't want. Reynolds has got through got fed up of waiting around behind Kitching and Williams has just bolted, he's gone. The gap has opened up to one and a half seconds. This race could already be won. Oh, contact by the back! Into the barriers goes the 71, that's Juan Moniki battling away with Tristan Rennie and Juan Moniki has struck the barriers. He's off in the infield. He was very lucky not to go in full chat. He just missed the big tyre barrier and uh, to be fair, that is Juan Moniki's race over but Tristan Rennie gets away with it. But I have to say, that was a very close call for Moniki. He's up out of the cart and OK, but he is very lucky indeed. Now that could have gone a lot, lot worse, especially if he was carrying slight bit more speed. He could have drifted back across Billy's blind, but fortunately that didn't happen. Was very lucky, as, uh, as you mentioned, Jake. So Moniki out of the running, unfortunately. Yellow flags will be waving down there. But I was going to say a few laps ago, Archie Kitching, this suits him really well, being in second place, controlling that pack with Harley Horton, his main championship rival positions behind but now they're separated by just one place and Horton will be very keen indeed to get past Kitching and try to close the gap on the championship leader. Meanwhile Alex Hughes who had that devastating DNS in the first race who uh, had a mechanical problem on his way to the grid for second position in the first final and now finds himself starting at the back of the grid. Alex Hughes has worked his way up to ninth position already and we have still got an entire second half of the race to come. Hughes is not giving up. He's got plenty of time to catch up to these guys, especially if they're going to continue their tussle. Jez Williams, again, has opened up the gap for two seconds. He's just dominant here at Clay Pigeon. He knows this circuit very well now, has obviously cemented himself at the front end of the field. And if these Coles drivers continue to squabble, it's just going to be an open season for him, and he'll clinch two finals out of two, and that will help him be elevated to third in the drivers championship with just one weekend to go so jez williams genuinely now has a chance to fight for the title at forest edge in uh, four weeks time meanwhile there is a terrific battle going on uh, elsewhere in the field as the drivers continue to uh, contest second position reynolds still hanging on to it from kitchen and horton gornall is now trying to get onto the back of finn smith as Tristan Rennie has made the move on Jed Murphy, so Tristan Rennie is up into the top ten as well. So both Hughes and Rennie have fought their way back into the top ten. Good stuff. Yeah, brilliant racing so far from uh, most of the Coles racing guys. Uh, all racing really hard in second position. As I mentioned as well, Horton will be very keen to get past Kitching, but doesn't want to jeopardise the chances for any of those drivers to pick up any points. That would not suit the team whatsoever. Jez Williams, though, at the front, if they continue to let him get away, which is seeming pretty likely at this point, he seems to just have superior pace, then obviously closing that championship uh, down, and there could be a real <coughs> jeopardy for any of the Coles racing guys to even take the championship, especially if Williams carries this form into the final two rounds of Forest Edge. And particularly if the Coles racing drivers keep taking points off each other. There is a very strong urge to team up and work together, but if Jez Williams continues this kind of form, 
is disappearing up the racetrack. The gap is up to two and a half seconds now. Here we go. We're fed up of waiting. Harley Horton now takes second position away from Harry Reynolds. So clearly nobody's got the pace to run with Jez Williams today. So now it becomes a race for second position. So both Archie Kitching and Harry Reynolds felt, well, if I'm at the front of the queue, we can catch up to Williams no problem. Neither of them are right. Williams has the raw pace on his own. So now Horton's having a go at the front of the queue. And he's finding out he doesn't have the pace either. He's into Billy's blind. Up the inside, Harry Reynolds tries to get through. Horton does not allow that to happen. He kicks up the curves there, Harry Reynolds, on the way through the S's. And that unsettles the cart to a certain degree. Now up the inside, he throws it one to get into third position. Kitching's going to have to be careful not to drift out wide. And the E-plate, Callum Boyson tries to shut down Willis. Willis has got the line on the inside. Sam Gornall now drifting out to the left. He's the buttons. He goes from one side to the other. Gets up on the inside of Callum Boyson. Takes the place. And now Alex Hughes is on the back of the queue. So Alex Hughes is about to start picking them off one by one like raisins. This is helping Alex Hughes as well as Jez Williams, those ahead and behind. I think any plan that the Coles Racing team guys had has just flown firmly out the window. They're all very much in it for themselves, it seems. Well, Harley Horton has been a brilliant few laps for him. It will enable him to close the gap to Archie Kitchen in the championship and potentially to Jez Williams on the track, although I can't see that as being particularly likely. Just over a third of the race still left to go. Kitching was in third at the end of that last lap. I'm pretty sure that Reynolds and Willis in behind with Gornall and now Hughes will have something to say about that in the laps to come. This is down to tyre pressures again. I think Kitching is having to ease off a little bit because there was a massive rain cloud hanging over the circuit before we started. So the tyre pressures will have been adjusted to compensate for that in case it rained. But the sun's come back, so it's hot again. And that means that the circuit's going to increase in temperature. So anybody who's compensated their tyre pressures in the potential for rain has actually got it slightly wrong. But we saw at the end of the previous final, the one that wasn't televised, sadly, that uh, Archie Kitchen was able to steal back a couple of positions right at the bitter end and get himself back in a second. Now Kitchen is third at the moment, but he's falling further into the clutches of Reynolds and finding it tough to run with Horton, who's trying to get the gap up a little bit. Either he's just conserving the car for a couple of laps to try and get a little bit more of a momentum later on in the race, or he's actually really struggling to cope with the pace, and uh, they might have got the tyre pressure slightly awry. But whatever happens, Alex Hughes has made the move on Finn Smith and joined the back of that cavalry. So he will at least want to get back on the podium if he can't get a victory, because Jeff Williams is already uh, three, nearly three and a half seconds clear of the rest of the field as they come through. In fact, it is now three and a half seconds because Williams sets another new fastest lap, a 35.96. He's the only driver, uh, no, sorry, I'll hit my word straight away. There's only three drivers who have gone under 36 seconds. One of those is uh, Williams, and then there's two more who have just come through, Alex Hughes and Callum Boysen has just done a 35.94. He's the fastest driver on track at the moment as he tries to get himself back onto the tail of Sam Gornall. But this is fascinating stuff for second place. There is now, incredibly, eight of them who could grab second position in this race. We're showing, we're being shown here just how unfortunate Alex Hughes was by that DNS in the first heat. He clearly has the pace and uh, nearly as quick as the race leader, Jez Williams, who's got all that open air as well. That is a seriously mean feat there um, by uh, Alex Hughes. There's an overtake here in the middle of the pack trying to get that is through. Hughes. That is Hughes, yeah. Hughes moving up a position. Might have been two. He's out of Boysen goes into him! Oh, Boysen into him! Boysen's broken the right front suspension, or the right front axle, sorry, of the car. He's going to have to tour into his eye. He can't even make it there because the wheel is flailing off the car. Alex Hughes might have damage as well. Oh, disaster. It sounds as though there's a problem with 27 Ollie Stevens. It sounds as though he's got a potential problem brewing. But it's game over for Callum Boyson. He's out of the race after contact with Alex Hughes. He dived back on the inside of Hughes, having uh, initially lost out to him. Wanted to get the place back straight away, and there was contact. So any chance Hughes might have had of grabbing a podium is now going to have to wait for the final couple of laps. Yeah, I think Alex Hughes might have just like, escaped without any damage there. It doesn't seem like it's affected his pace too much as things stand. But this battle for second, meanwhile, is really hotting up. They're, they're not imminently trying to overtake each other. Kitching's in it. Kitching's in second place. 
Yeah, Kitchen's managed to move up to that position. I, I didn't see when that happened, to be honest. He's We're so busy <laughs> focusing on Hughes and uh, Boysen. We missed it. Exactly. Reynolds and uh, Horton now behind. Horton seems to have that second place more or less wrapped up. They had a fairly decent margin a few laps ago. Now Kitchen up to second place. And once again, we're focused on opening up that championship lead. Now, this is interesting because we've got Hughes in eighth and we've got Rennie in ninth. And Rennie is now right behind Alex Hughes. So, if the Coles Quartet from second through fifth, Kitchen, Reynolds, Horton, Gordon start battling, which they are! This can end up being a very spicy end to the race. Reynolds and Hort uh, Reynolds and Kitchen, sorry, side by side. Reynolds trips out wide, Horton gets through, Gordon gets through, and Reynolds' eagerness to get into second place has cost him. Down to fifth position he falls. So Kitching is the leader of that battle, then Horton, then Gornall, and then it is Reynolds down to fifth in front of Willis, Smith, Hughes, and Tristan Rennie. A really exciting battle between the Coles Quartet. The first world of motor racing, right? You don't hit your teammate. These guys are in the fine line between tough and crazy, and they are flirting with it right now. Yeah, they're, they're, they absolutely are, like just the, how the track is flirting with the, the big black cloud which has been hanging over the circuit for most of the day but uh, hasn't come to full force yet. But Kitchen will be thanking his lucky stars, really, that Reynolds has fallen down the order. That is uh, pretty good for him. They seem to have, well, not really bad blood over the course of this race, but they've certainly been racing hard. And it just doesn't look like it's going to end as we approach. We're in the final minute of racing now. There's just no way of calling how this one's going to go. So Hughes has got onto the back of Finn Smith. Tristan Rennie's a couple of cart legs back. Jez Williams is just cantering to the flag. It's like Christmas has come early for him. But uh, yeah, down the straight, Kitching is really struggling for front end pace. So Horton's having to nudge him down the main straight in order to stand any chance of getting a clean run through to the S's. And now Gornall is stepping up the attack, as is Reynolds. This is about to get personal. Here we go. Gornall up on the inside of Horton. He dives. Reynolds goes through. All three of them. Absolutely amazing. Reynolds, I think that is, has gone through to second. Indeed he has. And now we've got Horton banging wheels with Gornall. Gornall gets two wheels on the grass. Willis goes around the outside into the left. Hughes now comes up on the inside of the top bend. And Finn Smith is to his inside now as well. Tristan Rennie coming for it. Last lap. Here we go. And goodness knows how this is going to play out. But Sam Gornall is shunted down the order to the back end of the queue. Now it is Reynolds in second place. He gets way too much curve. Loses the back end. But I think he's got enough momentum to hold on to it. Meanwhile, Jez Williams is going to saunter his way to the finish line. What an amazing weekend it has been for the Vision Motorsport star. He comes out of the final turn. Jez Williams cleans up. Two wins out of two. Domination. Second place is Harry Reynolds. What a drive to second place. Third is Archie Kitching. He picks up another podium. And that means his lead heading to Forest Edge is 17 points over Harley Horton. Archie Kitching somehow ends up being in the right place at the right time to pick up as many points as possible. Absolutely phenomenal. Horton in fourth position. Ryan Willis in fifth. Great fight back from Alex Hughes to finish in sixth position. Finn Smith is seventh. Another good drive from Tristan Rennie in eighth. Uh, Sam Gornall is ninth, and Ollie Stevens fights back to 10th. Then Jed Murphy and Logan Parker, Nicole Sutherland and Alfie Davies, Luke Evans and Cameron Ross, the three retirements, Callum Boysen and Juan Maniki, and of course the non-starter being one of them, Jacob Baldry, who had his accident in practice on Friday. Get well soon, Jacob. But what an amazing performance it was for Jez Williams. Jez Williams has taught the main contenders a few tricks this weekend and put himself right into contention for the crown. Archie Kitching still leads with a second place finish and with a pair of podiums, Harley Horton should have a positive end to the season at Forest Edge. Uh, final two, started third, uh, got into second off the, off the start and then was just trying to stay with Jez, but he just, was just pulling a gap every lap. And then once he got quite a big gap, we started uh, battling for second, uh, went down to fifth, and then got back up to second, was uh, leading in second for a bit, and then went back down to fourth on the last couple laps, and then come third because of Harry's penalty. Final two was a really good one. Um, we started off in third place, um, straight away came into second, and then um, Stayed there for quite a while and then had a bit of pressure from Harry and um, Harley. So we we're battling out a bit, which made um, Jez uh, get a bit of a lead. So we were basically just fighting for second there. So 
in the end, um, I came third, but Harry um, unfortunately had a penalty, so he came second in the end. I'd just like to thank Coles Racing and Ogden for all the power. In the first final, we started to uh, pull because we had in heat one, we had second, in heat two, we had first, and then obviously in quality, which we had third which press pole on the grid and then when we was on the grid <clears throat> I just got away um, and I just pulled a gap pretty fair decent gap <laughs> and then final two we started pole on the grid um, Archie and all the rest stayed with us for quite a while and then we just they started battling and then I pulled 